This beast, which is currently seething behind me, is not, as it may first appear, a BMW 528i E39. No, in fact, it's a Hartge H5 2.8. They may look the same, but there's much more going on under the skin. Now, before we start the review, I just want to take a few moments to thank the today's video sponsor, Exter. Don't worry, I'll be very quick, bear with me. Now, like Hartger or Hartge, take the concept of a basic BMW and evolve it into something more. Exter do the same thing with your humble wallet. Now, not only is this thing very good looking, it's incredibly small, hardly any bigger than a credit card inside it, but you can fit up to nine cards in here. But reaching cards in the main section is not just cool, it's fun. Now the main body here, where your credit cards and bank cards live, is RFID shielded, so it protects you from card skimming fraud and potential theft. And it has a handy elastic strap for cash, remember that, and receipts. Inside the front cover you've got two more slots for cards, and on the back you find the reason you'll never lose your wallet again. This solar powered card tracker, it links to your phone so you can locate it anywhere in the world. And not only that, you can ping the phone from the wallet, or the wallet from the phone. What's that? A red wallet will clash with today's green car. Red and green should never be seen after all. Don't worry, this soft leather can be had in seven colours. You can have it in lovely Tuscan leather. Mmm, Tuscan. Check out the link in the description below for 20% off site-wide right now. Now, Hartge, as I've always called them, or Hartge, as I'm now reliably informed they're actually called, were around since 1971. They were founded in Merzig in Germany, and they would take standard BMWs and re-engineer them to make them better looking and faster and better handling. And that's what they've done on this particular car. This started life as a high-spec E39 528i with lots of toys and trim, but it's converted by Bird's BMW, Hartge's UK distributor and, and builder. So what did they do to it? First of all, let's look at the stance. It's a lot lower, isn't it? 35 millimeters lower than standard. The M Sport suspension takes it down 25 millimeters, and this is 10 millimeters further, so it's very, very low indeed. And then once it's on the ground, they fill the arches with their own unique alloys. 19 inch wearing 245, 35 Dunlops are currently on it. They were Continentals, I believe, from the factory. All the UK built cars may have differed slightly. And then of course, Around the front, they added their own unique lower chin spoiler, which gives it a very aggressive look. And of course, you can't forget what it is, like Alpina, who do a very similar thing. They had their own badges, their own decals, and in this case, their own exhaust. And of course, they do more under the bonnet as well, but I'll come to all of that when we're on the road, because it's absolutely freezing out there. Now the interior you got on your Heart H5, sorry, your Heart G H5, depended really on the donor car because what you could do as a customer was walk in and either buy a car from them or bring your own BMW 5 Series and they would then do their magic to it. This particular car was very well specced in terms of comfort. It's got the biscuit tan leather seats with multi-way electric adjustment and uh, memory function as well, so it's extremely comfortable there. These doors have got more technology and toys than some entire cars I've driven. You've got tweeters, second tweeters, electric mirrors, electric windows all round on all four doors, you've got your memory function, and there are two big felt lined bins. This is more comfortable, as I say, than an entire budget car. Wrapping around the entire dashboard, the door tops, the centre console, the gear knob, this is a Switchtronic automatic, which is a bit of a shame. It's considered luxury, but I think it dilutes the car a bit. Um, you've got this wonderful, wonderful bird's eye maple, which is just beautiful. It wouldn't look out of place on a very expensive dining table. <laughs> Instrumentation wise, you've got this almost famous in their own right BMW dials. They're beautifully crisp and legible. Uh, they've got a top speed registered as 100 and well, 100 and, 140 is the biggest number, but the dial carries on to 160 without numbers. Equal in prominence to the speedo is the rev counter, which red lines at just over 6,000 RPM. And uh, underneath that is the, one of my favourite BMW features the little swing on with a needle which hangs down in the bottom of the dial and tells you what instant MPG you're doing. And I suspect it'll be fairly low today. They've done quite a nice little mirror image thing here with these two round dials. The one on the left is for the fog lights, uh, front, rear, both, and on the right for side lights and dip lights. I do like the symmetry of that. Split down the centre there's the speedo rev counter, fuel gauge, temperature gauge, and then the fog light main light switches. And it's just a really nice symmetrical pattern. If you've got OCD it's going to make you very happy indeed. This car is fitted with an M Sport multifunction airbag steering wheel. 
So you have things for your cruise control, volume for the radio, and I believe there are controls for Switchtronic. Yes, there is a Switch Logic thingy down here, which I don't know how to use. I'll try and figure that out as we go along. And the two stalks behind the wheel, wipers on the right, indicators, flasher for the headlights, and cruise control button on the end of the stalk on the left. All very nice and simple. In the middle of the car, big, big air vents to flow air in and make it lovely and nice and cool for you, beneath which is a concealing panel of bird's eye maple, which hides BMW business cassette player. Now we fold that down and you've just got the, the main panel of the BMW business radio showing your AM, FM and, and preset buttons and a big rubber volume knob. Following that same style down below, we've got the aircon, heating ventilation package, multi-stage heated seats on both the front drivers and passenger's sides. And it's curious, it'll pop out a pair of cup holders which look very shallow indeed. You may have seen the modern Monday's 520D, which is a F11 shape. And I have to say that they've not really progressed in the cup holder technology at BMW, unfortunately. There's a secret pop-up lighter socket down here, so you can plug in your phone charger and then hide it away if you're ever not charging your phone, but that will never happen, so that will always be up. Then we have the Switchtronic, sorry, Switch Logic uh, automatic gearbox behind this uh, park reverse neutral drive, and then the manual shifting on the left hand side should you want to try and take over and start it in first to get more performance out of this thing. Central locking and a big old hazard light switch just there, very nice. Behind which is looks like it's never been used because the chrome is immaculate. Little little ashtray for your sweet wrappers. And this is kind of cute. A little tiny cubby hole, like a roll top desk top, just in hiding in there so you can put little small knickknacks in there. I don't know, keys maybe or something. Maybe they're preempting keyless entry and they wanted somewhere for you putting your keys, but then when they actually did keyless entry, they forgot to put it back. Proper old school handbrake because it's an old school car. And a big, oh well, no, it looks like it's in a big cubby hole, but it's not, it's really shallow. Just enough space for, just enough space for not quite a mobile phone. Um, or maybe, yeah, you may put sunglasses in there perhaps. Pop a phone on top, it'll just about balance. Useful, useful consumer information. Now the dash top slash T-shelf is very curvaceous and, and swoopy. Uh, you will just about balance a mug of tea on there if you don't fill it too high. Just don't put it in the airbag because it might blast in your face if there's any fault. Glove box is felt lined quite deep but very shallow, so not the most useful space in the world. Up top we have an electric sunroof, so if it was a nice sunny day, which it isn't, it's bright but it's blooming chilly, uh, we'll leave that shut. It's a tilt sliding thing, so should you wish to have ventilation that way, you can. We won't today though. And courtesy light and a couple of individual map lights here in the front ceiling as well. Oh, we're lovely. And both of the sun visors have mirrors and beauty lights. Ah, oh, beautiful. I wish. Let's have a quick look in the back and then go for a drive. For a relatively large car, the rear isn't as commodious as you might expect. The driver's seat is clamped fairly tight down on my toes. I can just about get them in there and wiggle, but not a lot more. And uh, I'm sitting quite upright and not much knee room either. There aren't any map pockets either, I noticed, which I'm surprised at. The wood in the back is ever so slightly different to the front, I noticed. It's a slightly darker pattern. Uh, you do have electric windows, obviously, I mentioned that. Uh, a little cubby hole, felt lined again to stop things rattling. And a wee ashtray as well. There's a nice big armrest, so it turns it into two big, comfy armchairs rather than uh, two separate chairs, although there is a third lap belt, so you can sit three across here. Two air vents in the centre, so both passengers can have their own flow of air, although there's only one control for volume and one for temperature, so you both have to agree how much and how hot you want it. And there are two little tiny cup holders, which are the same little pop-out curios as the front, but now, thanks to being further away from what's underneath them, actually able to take cups without falling over, which is uh, something of a benefit. In terms of audio quality, it's going to be pretty good with a business system because you've got three speakers in each front door, you have a pair of speakers in the parcel shelf, and you have tweeters in the rear doors as well. So that's uh, about 10 speakers, and there may well be a sub optioned as well. So quality sound all around from that nice old tape player in the front. <laughs> Headroom's not too bad, and visibility's nice because you've got uh, these large Hofmeister kinked um, quarter light windows going on. They don't open, but they do give you a nice airy feel. We'll take a quick glance in the boot and just say it's really long. It goes back all so far. Hang on. There we go. 
I can barely touch it with my feet, it's, it's huge. If they'd given you less boot space, you could have had much nicer rear seats in this thing. I'm not sure what the priority was really. Here on the side it says BMW 6 disc CD changer, so you can have some premium sound, although popping in there to look at it, it's actually an Alpine, a uh, CHM 5620 if you're interested in such details, which is a pretty good unit. I'm pretty sure I have one of those I mean, one of my own cars at one point. And over to the right hand side, we've got a nice big cubby hole and underneath a BMW turbine wheel. Building your modified car around an E39 is already a great starting point. It was, of course, the first car to have an all aluminium chassis, which made it stiff and light. It came with, uh, in this particular model, 193 horsepower straight six engine with variable valve timing. You could choose a five speed manual or a five speed switch logic automatic gearbox. And it's got McPherson strut independent front suspension and multi link independent rear suspension. There are a few other E39 oddities as well. The bonnet release is down here by your foot, and when you pull that, a little plastic tag pops out of the kidney grills and you pull that to open it. To get into the boot, there's a little button electric switch to release the tail. They're not tailgate, it's just a saloon. This car is currently for sale at Stone Cold Classics in Rotom in Kent. Check out the link in the description below and see the rest of his really quite fun stock. Since this has been with Stone Cold, they've done a great deal to make it as nice a car as absolutely possible. He has been through this car with pretty much a fine tooth comb in terms of things to fix, repair, update and improve and put it back to the perfect spec for a Hot G, Hot G sorry, BMW. The front of the car has been repainted, new decals have been sourced, the cam and crank sensors have been changed, most of the rubber hoses under the bonnet have been changed, it's got a brand new XI battery in it, it's got brand new tyres, the wheels have been refurbished. Basically this car looks and feels for the most part like a brand new car. The steering wheel is a genuine original BMW M wheel. It's better than the it's not perfect but it's better than the original that was in it to start with. But when Hartke got hold of this, they did a lot to the engine. Well, it's presumed they did a lot to the engine because their demonstrator had the full kit and as a customer, you could opt to have as much or as little as you wanted to on your individual car. Now the full kit would have included a new camshaft, one millimeter larger valves all round, and those valves are three-way ground to give better uh, gas clearance or gas flow at low RPM. The head is ported and polished, for, um, again, for better gas flow. And they use the inlet manifold from the older 2.5 litre straight six because that's larger and gives a better flow. Then they remap it to get the absolute best out of that and they put their own custom made exhaust on it. And all told, this raises the car from 193 horsepower, which was a limit set by BMW to kind of fit comfortably with uh, German insurance regulations and limits, uh, up to 230 horsepower. And the red line goes up from 5,300 to just over 6,000. The torque jumps considerably as well, going from 206 to 221 newton meters of the stuff. So all in all, it gives it far more of a kick. Now, unfortunately, that's slightly diluted by the automatic gearbox. 0 to 60 on the manual is 6.9 seconds, or 0 to 60 on the auto, it's only eight. But it's more of a leisurely ride, and this is a big car, and perhaps this can be driven as more of a GT or a cruiser rather than an out-and-out -out sports car. In Germany, the company demonstrator was a manual. Interestingly, the Bird BMW demonstrator in the UK was a switch logic automatic like this. It was noted at the time that the steering felt considerably sharper on the Harky modified cars. And I have to say, it does feel very light and very sharp to be behind the wheel of this thing. And uh, if, if you'd like more in-depth information about the history of the E39, I'll pop a link up up there I think it is, uh, on a card to um, my BMW 540 E39 review from not that long ago actually, it tells you a lot about the design and the history of the model. As I found on that particular car, it was very keen on rolling quite a lot. It was nicely sprung and very comfortable, but it did roll. And even the M Sport car, which is 25mm lower than the standard sprung car, has a, a tendency to roll. This is much tighter. This is really sharp. Of course, it helps this is a 2.8 straight six rather than the four liter V8, because, because the straight six has had rack and pinion steering, whereas the V8s, because of a space restriction, had recirculating balls, so they weren't quite as sharp as these ones are. 
something I hadn't really remembered from previous E39s is just how heavy the throttle is. It's a really stiff pedal. You have to give it a proper shove to make it travel. And considering how large the footwell is, it's tucked fairly far over in the corner, and the brake pedal is just vast. But the brakes on this, with that big pedal, are very sharp. Push hard enough on the throttle pedal and you do get a delicious kick down off it. And that wonderful BMW straight six noise, there really is nothing like that. It's one of the all time great engines. It's just got a unique growl. Other straight sixes do sound good, but not quite as good as that. It does feel firm on the road. You can feel there's just no flex in the car's body. This road isn't that special as most British roads aren't in terms of surface quality, but it's lovely the way it just sits comfortably. You don't feel it vibrating. You can't feel any creaking or twisting in the shell. It's lovely. It's really nice. That exhaust gives it a certain urgency of tone to the, the sound coming out of the engine. So even as a, a gentle GT Cruiser, you are still going to be just feeling a little bit, not on edge exactly, but ready to, to boot it and get going. This car's only got 56,000 miles on it, which considering the age, it's, it's a 20 plus year old car. It's not that much at all, really, is it? wonderful as a, as a, a kind of a howl from the air intake as you put your foot down it's just, oh, just magic this is one of those cars that won't appeal to everyone but people who do appreciate these and things like the Alpinas which are a very similar philosophy will just absolutely get it and absolutely love it and just want one of these just so much more than a standard E39 because it's just so rare and special and unique. And this is incredibly rare. This car was supplied by Bird's BMW, obviously being the UK um, Hartgee uh, distributor, but the customer who wanted it wanted a V8. So they pulled the 2.8 litre engine out of it, fitted a V8, but then the customer cancelled the order. So Bird's put the 2.8 back in again. <laughs> and so it was very briefly a 5.4, and actually a 550, wouldn't it? I think it was a 5 litre V8 they would have used rather than the 540 so uh, yeah it's had an interesting history now as I say Hartger as a company was founded in 1971 and the name comes from the founder himself and they were modifying cars all that time and in 1985 they actually gained um, manufacturer status so that when they built a car out of a BMW they were able to take the BMW VIN tags off and fit their own VIN tags on instead which is quite an accomplishment. Sadly though times change, demand dries up, I don't know, world recessions that kind of thing but very sadly the company was dissolved in 2019 and is no more which is a pity. Although this car is quicker and better handling than a standard E39, you really can't think of it as a sports car. It is very much more of a GT, a fast cruiser. Something with just a bit more individuality, and a bit more style perhaps. This is very smooth and composed with the auto box, but I can't help but feeling it would be a bit more involving if I had a proper manual five speed in it. I don't know if dark metallic greens to everyone's taste, but on this particular car, on this shape with these modifications, I do think it works well. It's, it's a kind of bold color that this kind of body kit needs. Well, the throttle pedal's quite heavy and the steering's not that light either, really, but it does feel very, very connected indeed. You really are aware of what the car's doing and how it's doing it. The wheels are enormous for a car this size and you can kind of feel that through the suspension. Not in terms of vibration or bounce as you do sometimes with an SUV, but it does follow the road a little bit because of the, the size of those steamroller wheels. But with the uh, slight camber at the back, it does grip incredibly well through the corners. Wow, that really is a unique noise. They do say that the E39 is the best BMW in living memory. And I have to say, I do agree. There's just something about the way it feels so well made and so solid, even though these things are, you know, best part of 20 years old, even the youngest ones are best part of 20 years old. 
they still feel solid, they still feel good. They feel like a car you could drive a long way every day and it really wouldn't suffer for it. You may not want to do this particular one because it's just a little bit special, but if you wanted to, it'd be up for it. The seat position is perfect, the driving position is perfect, everything is just right on this car. Granted, I would prefer it with a manual gearbox, but that's just me. That's my own personal preference. Being a car of the 90s, the A and B pillars aren't that wide, so you don't have that much of a restricted view too badly. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this rather unusual and frankly incredibly rare, not actually a BMW at all, is it? Aha, uh -huh. it's a hard key. H5 2.8, beautiful, beautiful sedan. I've certainly enjoyed driving it. It's, I've been a passenger in a couple of these, but I've never driven one before. So this is quite an experience to feel exactly what it's like at the wheel. If you've enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe as always. And join me again next time when we're driving something completely different. Mm -hmm.